before we get into this week's app, I have to let y'all know that we are going to be in Chicago on Tuesday, March 28th. That's Tuesday, March 28th at the Color Club at 8 p.m. I'll have a link in the show notes description. Other than that, enjoy this week's most excellent episode. Oh, oh wait, no, because we told them if they could find us, they could execute us. We told that to the listeners? Yeah. I thought we told them that, that we were all going to buy a gun and then everybody gets one bullet. We said, we said a lot, a lot of things on yeah. this podcast. We said a lot of things. Welcome to Joy Tactics, the podcast dedicated to all things joyful, joyous, and meeting as many celebrities as humanly possible. Hosted by Eric Rahill, Nate Veroni, and Jack Bensinger. Enjoy. I was testing my audio with this song, but doesn't my voice sound pretty good like this? Listen. <clears throat> what? Moon River. Wider than a mile, I'm crossing you in style oh, someday. Right. And so, but that's pretty oh, good, right? Oh my God. I'm legitimately blown. No, nah, that wasn't oh, you. That was Cat, man. That was somebody yeah. else. Are you listen, right? when I try I'm and like, sing it, when I try and look, sing that. Okay, try it. Uh, what's the words? <laughs> You're speaking like a different language. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the Yiddish uh, Moon River. <laughs> and so wait, they go in between because I was just watching Drew Binsky uh, talking about uh, shout, out Drew Binsky. Tra- shout out Drew Binsky. Shout out Drew Binsky, one of the most realist travel hosts. But but he um, but so they're switching bes- between Hasidic, Hebrew, Yiddish. Hasidic's not a language. Right. No. Of course not. No. But Yiddish and Hebrew are languages, and they're switching. They're interchanging when they use that. that that's interesting to me. Right. Mm. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's kind of like Chinese has like Cantonese, Mandarin, Mandarin Cantonese, Fuso, Fusionese. Fusionese. And the Fusionese, it's, just, it's the smallest little... Uh, Nate, do you know about... The, it's like a tiny bit of land, but it makes up for one of the biggest variants in, in the Chinese language. Oh my goodness! It's very, very interesting. interesting. I feel it's like it is very interesting. interesting. I was about to say that it's Incredibly very interesting. interesting, and then yeah. you said, it. Do, "Do you guys feel like we're off to the fucking races? Like this is the fastest we've ever warmed up on the podcast?" I, I, I was really about to do. say the same thing. I was like, "I don't think that I I couldn't imagine a better start to the episode." Yeah, and I feel like uh-huh. this might. I'm just gonna predict this right now, and I'm gonna set this out into the universe. Yeah, this is going to be the greatest podcast episode that yes. has ever been recorded in Correct. human history. You don't know me, son. You don't know me, son. That's uh, <laughs> David Goggins. Do you guys know David Goggins? He's of this course. man oh, yeah. who, if you're not familiar, David Goggins is somebody who runs incredibly well for mm. a human. And he's very inspirational. No matter how he's much it hurts, he keeps going. Um I encourage you to Google him. <sighs> but, and, you know, I don't want to blow wait. anybody up, but oh, yeah, I up, heard man? about David Goggins in about 2012. Oh, that's before right. Before he was even... Because we have a very good friend, Ben. I'm not going to blow well, up. Well, don't say it name, because but, military... These are right, right. But Ben who, has a brother yeah. who was trained by David Goggins are about, you about serious? 10, 11 years ago. Yes, for real. And I remember hearing this guy's intense. That's I'm not so, going to say what they did because I don't want to breach military protocol. <laughs> and we're not talking about war. I swear to mm-hmm. God, y'all, war is not getting brought up in this, but we could talk about the military. No, we're done talking about war. We're, we're yeah. absolutely yep. done with that shit. We talk about but, it too no, much yeah. and we're done. Ben's brother got trained. So he's him. really Mr. about Goggins. that life. Like he's he's not like he's not capping when he's like, you know, talking about his like his discipline and David. how intense he is. I don't think he's capping about that, but I could see him having capped at one point about something because everybody well, caps. I don't think he caps. I think he reverse right. caps, where he's like <laughs> kind of letting people know about his truth too much. Where he's uh, people didn't like him because he's out there in the military and everybody's waking up at four, and he's like, "I woke up at midnight and I went on a run." <laughs> you rat! I'm not capping. So in a sense, wait. But listen to this, because I just watched okay. it. By the way, I'm back on TikTok. It got me. I deleted that Thank for God. about two weeks. Wasn't Everybody even thinking struggles about it. with addiction. And then it got me back. It pulled me back into its grip. But a TikTok was uh, suggested to me. It was a it was Joe Rogan, um, podcaster, talking to 
David Goggins yeah. about his morning routine, and he was saying, guess what, David? Every morning, I'm starting my morning with pain. Um, I'm waking up, I'm doing that ice bath, three minutes. I started out, I don't, it didn't feel too good. I don't even do the sauna before I start cold, I get in cold. It's hell, but it starts my day off right. And all the comments were like hyping David Goggins up for not like big timing him. They were like, it's so cool that David Goggins was like, good job, man, because David Goggins has gone through hell and he could own Joe Rogan if he wanted to in his own mornings. <laughs> well, I'm I like, get... damn, parasocial much? <laughs> yeah, good gracious. Good gracious for that. Good gracious. Well, I start my mornings with pain too. What's interesting about this? I wake up and I experience a different type of pain. How hot is the hot sauce that I'm using in my burrito? How much does my stomach hurt from how big the breakfast burrito I make is? Yeah. These are my pains. Are the you know, so is that make me David Goggins in um for just for experiencing you know, maybe pain? Maybe I'm in a micro sort of way, sure. Right. What could be more painful than um, you know, doing stuff that's not good for you? Really? Oh, yeah. I do want to say this re pain because me, I was talking to somebody about this recently. Celebrity. There really is no way to cheat the balance of of the scales in any type of way. Do you know what I'm? Do you know what I'm saying? I immediately, because I know what you're saying. Let me give an example of this, and pain. I'll bring pain in in a second. We just found out some horrible news about an artificial sweetener called Ethereal. Do you know about no. this? Wait, yep. what? Yep. No. Yep. Yep. Do you yep. know about this, Nate? For real. No, I'm like obsessed with artificial sweeteners. That's no, like, man, Nate, that's, are you really? That is like, a, a, I would say that's a good quarter of my daily calories Nate, or Nate, diet is but it goes diet to artificial, is no artificial ca sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners don't have calories, isn't that? Yeah, but I eat so much, it, it, it has makes calories? a caloric dent into Nate, my... Wow. I, I don't want tell you to me. go don't tell me into this. your pantry. I'm telling you, dude, because I love you. I care about you. Um, listen. One of the sweeteners, Ethereal, because I had just gotten these. It seemed like I was cheating the game because I was eating these delicious peanut butter cups, Quest peanut butter cups. Yeah, I'll put oh, their name on blast. Fuck, fuck them for trying to fuck with my health. <laughs> and I was <laughs> eating them. It was like 200 calories, sure, lot of but 20 grams of protein. And I was so satiated by them. And I was like, this is a, I'm eating one of these packets a, a packet day. Come to find out the main ingredient in that Ethereal has recently been linked to major increases in stroke no. heart uh, cardiac events no. cardiovascular events this shit is, nate throw out the artificial uh sweeteners no. except for i think aspartame is good to go because i use that no i okay <laughs> so at this point in my life i am so incredibly fucked and i don't think there is an amount of detoxing or me stopping right now i don't think Wrong. i think the damage is already done don't and think like i that, have man. a family history of uh, heart attacks strokes there's literally the two things that you just listed i have met I, I feel like maybe every single family member that i know has fallen from one of these fucking things no. so if i'm on top of that loading up my fucking body snorting this shit every fucking morning putting that shit wait, in my coffee wait, eating this can, shit all wait the can i ask what how are you using the artificial sweeteners what are these what are you putting them in i'm putting them in coffee mainly and i'm sweetening up um mm, uh, ex, smoothies that, as yeah. well and the coffee the caffeine's seeping into the poisonous chemicals and probably getting them hyper so they're probably even right. more fucking crazy in your body but nate don't you feel like um oh, jesus christ just no, come on, man. In the name of joy, in the spirit of the podcast of Joy Tactics, don't you feel like, okay, yes, everybody in my family dies young as hell. I never met any of my grandparents. Right. My uncles right. are all gone by the wayside. We all don't ha have any uncles at this point, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel like it is your challenge and duty in life to stop that mentality, uh, the, the fetus mentality, and say, you know what, I'm going to tie my sweater around my waist and I'm going to go up and down the mall or something like that? Yeah, you're right. It ends now. You know, it what ends I'm saying? tonight. When it you ends. mean, Jack, Jack, Jack just to, to, to explore what you mean by that, you mean like you go mall walking and work that shit off and start exercising and get the health back. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, well, that's if it, not everybody has access to a gym, go to the mall and just walk back and forth. I do want to say I'm falling in love with the gym I just started going to, not to change subjects, but hype it up, man. Did. But Evolve Fitness Ridgewood, it's basically. You can come there and find me and try to assassinate me, and I swear to God, I'll take a plate, smack it in your face. Wait, Eric, oh wait, no, know, because we told them that they could find us, they could execute us. We Eric. told that to the listeners. Yeah. I thought we told them that that we were all gonna buy a gun and then everybody gets one bullet. We, we said, said a lot of things on yeah. this podcast. We said a lot we're of only, things. but I'm not worried so about any of that. Deep. 
If any Wait, of us, yeah. You know what we need to do? I think that this is a perfect opportunity right now. Um, you know, I know we're, we've promised no ads ever on this podcast. We'll never right. have ads ever and never mm -hmm. bow down to an advertiser unless the money, unless the money's pretty good, unless it's well. like decent. But anyways, I think we should practice maybe doing sort of an ad read and how that would sound on the in a joy tactics way so and can i just preface could... this with, with imagining where this goes because imagine i walk into the gym you know how sometimes the bose headphones can get a little stinky if you sweat in them too much and you got to get new <laughs> ear pads yeah ears. Let, mine don't smell bad right now but let's imagine that they you know are going to be smelling bad i go up to the front desk i take my earphones off i said listen to this it's some person getting paid minimum wage to scan people in <laughs> i'm like check out what we did i, I show them the listeners it's got whatever two thousand downloads per episode holy yeah shit. that's real honey and i said listen to this <laughs> and it's a 12 minute ad for evolve fitness originally and it's progress an pics. kind of minutes. most sexual progress pics anybody's oh ever seen <laughs> i'm like can you get your manager over here right now <laughs> oh my god All of a let's, start, talk, let's talk they, money they start bumping it up in the speakers at the gym and people are hitting prs left and right <laughs> yeah crossfit all of a sudden it becomes this like ped banned substance type shit because we're so inspirational that's the thing are we too inspirational to the point where no you're not allowed to listen to this shit before you go on into competition because you might have a significant it's like a drug it's like mm -hmm. a drug, except it is one auditorily delivered because you know well, how the, well, you know how what? they built the pyramids and I'm not trying to change the topics to the pyramids, but you know that those were built with audio technology where they use sound waves to lift yes. a stone. Well, yeah. we, of course, just checking, just making sure like that the listeners knows. might not. But so, wait, before we do that, can we do the ad for Evolve Fitness? Oh yeah. yeah. My, but yeah, yes, yeah, please. All right, yes. all right. All right. All right. So Nate, take it away. So, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, uh, th I have been getting back in the gym lately and, um, Respect. I, I think Respect. there's no, there's nothing more important than your fitness and your health. Can you guys agree about that? Because that's what, of that's one of Certainly, the most number one health is wealth. Exactly. And I went to this new gym and I would like to thank the, uh, we have a sponsor of this episode and it is, what's it called? Uh, Ridgewood's um evolve, evolve, fitness. evolve, evolve fitness. fitness evolve fitness fitness and I can I just say I love like this gym a lot and I've been going there and nobody's mean to me a lot of the other gyms I go to people come up to me and they spit on my face and they laugh at me for putting on 10 pound plates on the bench press and they say ah you fucking idiot you you can't bench press but not here there's no shaming there nope. is only positive vibes the locker rooms smell pretty good yeah and uh there the, the amenities are out of this out of sight and mm -hmm. well no eric towels. you've been there a couple times no towels well yeah well here's the thing it's the perfect balance between one of the most excellent gyms and one of the more kind of gyms like they had in the 70s where there's no amenities it's like rusty weights it's the middle zone of that and i kind of mm. like living in here's the thing no, no, almost nobody's in there uh, on off hours okay Right. So when nobody's there for some reason, why is this that when nobody's there, I can somehow lift way ass more weights? <laughs> because why there's less that? gravity I, in the room because there's less people there. Technically, I think it's more of like I have such a healthy relationship with my ego that when nobody's around, sure, I can bust it out and I can do superhuman strength. Yeah. But when a lot of people are around, I'm so averse to showing off that it fucking actually affects my muscular abilities and yeah right but so also right. it's just weird to me eric that like whenever you're talking about hitting these you know 400 PRs, pound in human pr world record yeah personal just world really records. really like an amount of weight that i couldn't imagine like uh like literally the rock hitting you know what i'm saying but whenever well, you, you do know, that you're like oh i was alone the yeah there's you know, you know nobody that, there. like yeah you get what mothers can get strength from like if child's a car was danger. pitting their child to the pavement, right. they can somehow summon enough motherly strength right. to do superhuman things. I put myself through crazy ass. It's like I'm doing acting exercises on the fucking mats and I'm right. imagining the war <laughs> shit. And I imagine it, you guys almost dying badly from being crushed by all type of different uh, weights and crazy shipping containers and all That's this stuff. That's good. And... Um, it, my imagination actually is helping my fitness, which is, I never thought acting could help me in that way. Now, 
I do it, it more is. methodly. I'll tell you what, I do it more method. That I might have to try that out, but what I do is I get a 50 pound dumbbell and while my girlfriend's asleep in bed, I hold it out over her head and it's real deal. If I drop this shit, <laughs> it's over. So oh, I'm that's, not acting that's like genius. it's method. No, you know, I'm like screaming <laughs> and she's having a sweet dream about whatever. So I really do like that. And now yeah. how come whenever I go to the gym, cause I've tried a gym and I tried to get a personal trainer one time and this person basically mentally tortured me. He this said, is future. No, this was somewhere else. This was in Chicago. And this person lied to me about having brain cancer in order to get me to help them pay for their medical bills. They ended up getting fired. They were telling me, telling people that they were not doing steroids. They were, they were like the second I told them, cause it was like, I did a trial. And when I told them like, yeah, I'm not going to extend it. They were like, Hey man, I have brain cancer. Also I'm cheating on my husband. Also, they just started being so rude to me. We used to have so much fun all the time. All of a sudden, I said, I'm not going to give them their bus- any business. And he starts being all mean to me. But then he got fired. Well, did you ask him natty or, natty or not? Well, back then, they didn't have that phraseology. Otherwise, if it was now, I would have well, said, hey, you man. You didn't have that phraseology. Well, back then, well, this is you know, this is way, this is before bodybuilding had entered the zeitgeist. Natty or not? Natty or not? Nate... <laughs> Now, you haven't Seriously? been asked this. I get asked this all the fucking time. Me too. When they see basically my this hamstring. is you, <laughs> you go up to the more jacked people in the gym, and some of them you can clear. This is just oh, a TikTok. Oh, oh. You can see who clearly is on the fucking crank. I'm understanding now, and uh, they have to answer if they're natty or yes. not. And some of yeah, them give people the most ask me that a lot. Yeah, dude. When I come, uh, you guys are on TikTok. Are you on TikTok? This is for this now, is me. For one day I'm back. Look, this is <laughs> tell me if this means anything to you. This is me in the gym. Cause I'm lifting so much weights that people are starting to look at me. So when I'm lifting weights, I go like this: "Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious." Don't oh, be suspicious. that's yeah. hilarious! That is fun. <laughs> that's, that's excellent, fun. man. <laughs> Don't be suspicious. Because oh, I'm lifting who so among much, us? So I'd be walking around like the little fox rabbit from Dora the Explorer, trying to lift ass weights in my bandit, whatever it's called, stick. Because I want to go to so the much. Among Us kind of grand world championships oh my and body God. everybody. <laughs> Literally. And I body them by like Korea. blackmailing them. We got to play Among Us. Uh, we got to bring pod. Among Us back. There was so, how was there so much Among Us swag? That's they what probably I was made about billions say. of dollars off the Among because Us Because of swag. the joy. The Among Us brought peace to earth in a time of crisis. It was a haven in a heartless world Among Us during the COVID. I'm saying that Among Us artists must have better have made at least a bill from all that because... The cute art is the only reason that game took off. You think it would Eric, look like shit? Eric. No, I'm it was always going to defend the art, the artist. man. No, it's a good art, but it's about the people it's that got brought together through always it. Always about the art. <laughs> <sighs> I don't want to do this again. Last podcast, we started out with an argument. I swore to never argue again. Yeah, we're done with that. And guess what? I'm reading, capital R reading, one of the most popular capital books right R. now. And guess what? It's about video games. <laughs> Ender's what, Game. What is that book? It's called. It, you know what? It's called Chicken Tomorrow book. and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and. You know what? It's. I, I'm kind of cringing a little bit. I hate to say it. Some of it, but yet I can't stop reading. Let that in. Hmm. Let that. So and in. I. And this is one of those things where I'm like, I, okay, so what if I cringe at this sentence? I want to find out what happens to the characters. So what? And I'm not going to get cringe? caught up. I need to get over myself, really. And let myself enjoy stuff. Right. The biggest right. blessing that you can do in life is to do something called stop giving a fuck. Straight up. I'll be oh. walking down the street. I'd be putting on my, literally I'd be putting on my Pikachu beanie with the little yellow ribbons coming down my neck like Rapunzel. Mm-hmm. And I go to the coffee shop and I start reading books that will get me canceled if you saw the title of them. Not in that way, but in a different <laughs> way. In a, not, can, not canceled, but maybe like, you know, whatever. And then. You, are you reading huh? Ego is the Enemy with wearing the, oh, the I Pikachu finished reading that. I finished, yes, I was. Yes, I am. I'm reading books suggested to me from a MMA, uh, one of the uh, MMA guys. Um, called Ego is the Enemy, and it's the first book I ever read cover to cover. I finished it. I'm 31. <laughs> Dude, and now no, I, I just think it's an amazing image for real. To th- and what are you drinking? Red Bull? Black tea. Mm. Red Bull at a coffee. coffee? At like a really nice coffee shop? Like Some, Well, you guys <laughs> know my stand-up joke. I, won't, I don't want to burn it on the pod, but yeah. No. Do no. you guys I have a know funny joke about this? Huh? Popular drinks in the Northwest. This is like just, it feels so specific to the Northwest Seattle area. Coconut Do you know juice. what it is? Purple well, it's like juice. they have a lot of like drive through uh, espresso huts and a, and a lot of like bikini barista stands. Do you guys have these in like Ohio or Virginia? 
Hell no. Uh, no. We don't do bikinis in the South. <laughs> you like drive dresses. up. I've never been to one. I've only seen them, by the way. I'm not that type of guy. But there's a lot of baristas that are wearing bikinis and all special type of mm. underwear, and they're making the <laughs> drinks for all the kind of workers, the construction mm. workers that like to go in their big trucks. Well, they're all workers. So it's like a Hooters, but for coffee? It's it's kind of like a Hooters for coffee, like a small, like literally oh, just one coffee, little hut yeah. that Hoops. makes. But the, but the biggest drink, guess what? It's not coffee. It's this crazy, con- it's literally like two sugar-free Red Bulls with heavy cream oh 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 oh, oh. Ew. like flavor crazy like curdle. blue raspberry flavoring and that's then gonna whipped cream on top no what is wrong with people i don't no, know it's not it you're lying i've tr- i'm not kidding i've tried it before it's, deli- it's actually do you know delicious. what happens i drank so much red bull growing up and do you know what happens <laughs> what you literally your blood becomes <laughs> thicker and when somebody dies of a stroke because they had too much red bull they do the autopsy and their blood is sticking to their fingers like syrup that's not right. Like is that pancake right? Pancake syrup. Oh my. That's true. Go Google we it. We need That's to be true. eating the Mediterranean diet only. Hummus. Yeah. None of this shit. We are the killing blue ourselves for the I'm sake of. Blue. I can't Nate. believe that. Some person was like, their dick's fucking flopping out, is about to give you some fucking skim milk and re- sugar free Red Bull. And <laughs> <laughs> well, there was just a ter- not to bring up something terrifying. Flavoring. Go but ahead. But there was just a out. video. There was just a video of a guy trying to pull one of these bri- bikini braces into his truck from like oh no yeah, I think tries to I pull have, her in. I might have seen that. Yeah, and man, he tried to like algorithms. zip tie her. No, I he tried saw to this zip on tie her like a piece zip tie her. Like he tried to zip tie her hands. New packet of mm-hmm. like a new wine opener or something. And this guy got out on bail. I'm thinking, what are you doing? The hell? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know who probably bailed him out is this person's father, so they could shoot him in the head. Oh, Make I'll be so disciplinary. Would you guys be negative reinforcers or positive reinforcers to your children? Mm. Well, I'm not going to have kids because I'm focused on my career like Seth Rogen. But if I was <laughs> going to, um, I'd probably reinforce them with like your dinner is going to be as good as you behave. So if you behave fucking good, I'm going to literally put a suit and tie on and come out with a menu and be like, sir, ma'am, whoever. The menu for tonight but guess what if they don't take out the trash if they don't take a shower and they smell stinky guess what i'm gonna do what's for dinner it's a sandwich you know what's in it what knuckles what? i'm gonna beat the fuck out of them <laughs> Knuckle if, you, sandwich. If, you, if i when i was a kid and i heard that i was having chicken and brown rice for dinner i literally wanted to kill myself <laughs> 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 and sweet baby ray's like you know, mm. I mean, I, I feel for the parents. It's hard to cook dinners, but I just did not want to eat that shit. Hey, man, that sounds fucking nutritious compared to what was cu- cooking up in the Bensinger household. What were you guys making? I know, I'm com- that's complaining, but uh, whatever. I hated the taste of it. Let's just say 99% of my molecules are Velveeta or just regular-ass pasta with tomato sauce. Yeah, I had a very similar... I, I was eating some busted ass fucking <laughs> meals as a kid what were you eating just what were you totally eating? just like the literally like the you know those like penguin i feel like we were eating like those kids oh yeah meal, those crazy frozen, penguins oh my god yeah. the frozen meals that were just like it's basically like not even food like i feel like we were eating that like when i was well into my like junior year year of high school you know i'll just tell you now nate yeah. i take everything back about the staying away from sweeteners because you already got it <laughs> in some crazy ass way from <laughs> it's coming as a kid. I, it, the death is coming at me from all different types of angles <laughs> it's like i can't even avoid it at this point especially hanging out with eric eric's kind of a black hole of death a little bit you um, attract death and you attract negativity in a way that i've never yeah. seen a, a human being in my life you must well, have some crazy type of aura or sort of Eric connection with the cosmic realm that you must is, have watched a lot of billy and mandy growing up right no i wasn't allowed to watch that mm. i uh i don't know you know the death thing is a little bit real i do feel like i've not seen and known a lot of people that died but the <laughs> positive the negativity thing is wrong dude because I think I bring positivity to all environments except for the ones I hate. That's what you I bring do, the but negativity. you do, but in a way that's like Chris Farley style, where it's like, oh my god, this guy's like so sweet and you know yeah. nice, but there's some kind of like darkness. If you ever meet somebody who is Chris like Farley. so incredibly kind, dark, and generous, dude. 
And, yeah. you know, everybody said that about Chris. He would just be, he would just be the life of the party. And he would, uh, you know, go to a nursing home every week to volunteer just on his own. And nobody knew about it. But people like that have the craziest demons deep down and they are burying them. And in a weird way, I feel like that is transmuted That's me. into positivity and kindness. Uh, so I right. have to be a little you're suspicious right. of you, Eric. And I do love all the positive shit that you bring to our personal relationship and people around you, which is a lot and uh, way too much yes. to the point where I'm concerned for your demons getting uh, you know, buried and all of that shit. That is so You made me think you just made me think of I've shown Jack these videos. I'm not gonna say the name of this um YouTube channel, but there's a man who goes around the country and sort of interviews and like he I don't want to say humanize because obviously they're human, but all these kids with horrible disability not all horrible, but varying degrees of disabilities. And this guy is so sweet and so patient with you know who I'm talking about, Jack? I do. Okay. So sweet, so patient, so gentle, like doing an amazing thing by giving these uh, kids a platform to talk. But I have had to imagine, is there darkness there within him? For Because, you know what I mean, to every, yes. as I was saying earlier, there's there's balance in all. You know well, what I'm saying? Similar, so he does this amazing it, thing. Maybe he's got, he to wants the, to be um, a soldier no, he or is dark. He side. has dark, deep, Maybe deep he darkness does. within him. You know him. what? Sometimes 100%. the... Uh, Sometimes the path to, to light is through a dark tunnel, and so be it. You can't get out of right. that cave without going towards the light, and you know everybody gets to light from a dark place. So if you're hiding some demons and trying to fight them off by doing charity, good on you. At least you're not leaning and in further and further true. to it. True. Because this guy, sure, maybe he's doing it for money, profiting off of people who are in circumstances we can never imagine. But what did we say about the vending machine on the last episode? I forget. Me too. <laughs> Me as well. <laughs> wait but i, I but i want to ask you guys this question seriously about this balance this balance thing is so obvious right it's everybody go ahead this, go ahead but, but i'm just thinking like can you think of any way to cheat because like the ethereal perfect example reward now horrible i can't hospital stays later i'm t let me give another example yeah workout that's pain that yep. sucks while you're doing it unless yep. you're crazy like that like mr goggins <laughs> then after Dobbins. that you reward with a crazy ass body and okay. body highs from working out all chemicals going through your brain so wait do you see anything that could cheat the balance i do i do what what, what? is that well what's I'm funny is about this i'm immediately going into my year 3000 style brain you guys know that i think like this you think right. differently man i do because what i do I is when someone asks basically every sentence that i hear somebody saying is a riddle for what they're really meaning to say to me and i have to decipher what they're saying and then say here's what you really maybe that's mean. why you're so tired sometimes you know like you're just <laughs> you are your brain is tired. working like i've been to so many fucking doctors my whole life trying to figure out why i'm so tired and i can't figure your it brain out. is working on like an eric's like busted pc level like i do think <laughs> It is true. Like, if I think about, like... Like, I think that your, your brain is making that type of, uh, like... And it know, literally is, because I got the tinnitus like you wouldn't believe. My tinnitus <laughs> is fucking, like, it sounds like a concert all day if I have no... You have tinnitus? Not, that made, like, that drives some people to suicide. All right. Tinnitus. <laughs> cool, man. I just watched a documentary about it. I'm sure it won't. No. But, um, okay. I'm, I'm always happy. You're 3,000 so, brain. You're 3,000 brain. Right, you got to remind me what we're talking about, straight up. Oh, about the balance. What cheats the balance? Nothing oh, so cheat cheating the, the balance. balance is this. So you, what the the problem is that's going on here is, what you're doing is you're selecting circumstances in which this balance seems unattainable, right? But I invite you to just think about this. Most things in life, the balance is automatic. When it comes to having amazing, meaningful friendships, the balance is there. When it comes to making connections, there is no negative thing you have to do. Uh, when you put in positivity towards something, there are so many times that positivity comes out. If you go into a scenario and you ask somebody about themselves, about their parents or their whatever hair, they're going to appreciate that. You're going to learn something cool. Do you get what I'm trying to get at? Uh, let me let me put, let me counter that, but in a positive way. Listen, if you put tremendous love and care and attention into people. It's this is what we were put on this planet to do is to love others and make connections and have friends and laugh and have conversations and whatever. Sip. Yeah. And sip on 
whatever yeah, natural yeah, wine yeah, whatever you want whatever. but i'll tell you you put that in there that's great that thing's gonna happen but guess what every friendship has an end point whether that be a falling out or death uh, or loss. Why are you looking right at me? I can tell you're looking straight. <laughs> you're looking at me like straight. So the but more you minute, care about Eric. something, you just you're. Oh, but no, I, I think but that's Eric, beautiful. That's no, I don't dark, think that's no, bad. No, no, no. Okay, thank you for saying that because no, I, I think it's a, a dark outlook. To, if somebody dies, when somebody. All right, go ahead. It's like, it's almost the most beautiful thing about life to me in a very honest way of like, mm. you know, I mean, I'm thinking about. What, I was just talking to someone the other day about my pillars of life. Uh, what I what oh, I find fingers. to be the most important in life. What did I say? I said playfulness up and top. And this is when Eric was at his poets meeting, at weekly poets <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Somebody asked him, what are your pillars? <laughs> okay, second that I had, and this is what I find that I have with my close friends, is sort of, <clears throat> this is so, cr- you know what, we're we're bypassing cringe right now. We're going right to the quadruple heart. Cring- quadruple and, bypass. And what I, maybe this is so lame to bring up, but I'm saying... The most beautiful part of life to me is laughing in the face of horrible things happening. <laughs> laughing cr- till you cry when a friend dies. And you shouldn't be laughing, but basically you're laughing your ass <laughs> up because something inappropriate happened. You are laughing when you get the diagnosis. You know what I mean? Like having fun <laughs> no. in the face. Because guess what? Something so unimagined. We are all on a train that is headed to a final stop. And that final stop, unless you're very lucky, is going to be... Uh, a catastrophe you are going to be hurting worse than you ever hurt right before you die it's going to be pain it's all coming for us the world's going to be ending but guess what it's kind of fun to be here and dance till our feet get sore until then peace God damn. all right three, so three for the rest of the minutes, podcast 32 minutes uh, we can cut that i don't know if we that want was, you know God, we're that to was comedy a- i think we can just yeah 32 <laughs> minutes and 10 seconds um for the people who are on the patreon we would, or even, you know what, on whatever, if this is a clip, that'd be fun, or if this is on YouTube, why don't y'all go ahead and ask us this type of, or give us your type of question, what's the meaning of life, and we could l- look at it and discuss it back on the Patreon. But I want to put a warning on this. Mm. Nothing has meaning in a vacuum. Mm. Interesting. Nothing has meaning in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. Everything to have some nothing just means something. Something means something to be some to the point of being meaningful to something. Does that right. make sense? Yes. Damn Me and noise. Neil deGrasse Tyson. What's that, Eric? Sorry. How's your dryer? Yeah. What's wrong? A lock fell out of my pocket and was banging up against the glass. How heavy is it? Or what? Light. You... It was a light lock. Sorry. For your locker at the gym. Correct. Um. God damn it. Wait, can we go back to pyramids? <laughs> oh, sure. We were gonna go. We were gonna talk about those for a second, and uh, we got derailed. Heavily. The beautiful sand triangles that have blotted the the world with some ancient technology that's very clearly unanswered. It's one of the, it's. Isn't it funny? It's the biggest thing that humans have ever made, and it's the thing we know the least about. What can, the can fuck? we zoom out? Because I I I'm not trying to put any spin on this. I'm not putting any humor on this. They you. legit confuse and confound me. You're not alone. And anybody well, who thinks they know how? what the pyramids are, you are more confused than anybody. You are sadly I mistaken. I just watched anybody. something that said that they were batteries. Nate's drinking Chipotle. Type of limestone <laughs> batteries. <laughs> Nate, Nate You're is drinking that Chipotle? Chipotle, Nate? Is I that said, real? I said, well, <laughs> I went to Chipotle and I said, um, you know, we already had the guacarito, okay? And I said, what kind of other ways can I... Um, you know, mix it up at Chipotle and do things that no one's ever done before. So I said, they said, do you want a burrito bowl? I said, no. Do you want a burrito? No. Do you want a taco? No. No. I said, get out one of those fucking cups over there, put it at the front of the line, fill that bitch up with rice, fill Um, it up with beans, fill it up with more, all the rest of what's in that sour cream bin. I said, put, pour that fucking bitch into that shit. Whoa, and dude. I said, give it to me. Now I put a cap on it and I shook it up, shook it up as hard as I fucking could. I'd be and saying I just bitch so up, much. And I walked the fuck out of there. Bitch. Didn't even pay. Nate. Anyways. That is um, awesome. But Damn. what I wanted to say about the pyramids was you mentioned this Jack and Oh yeah, that's right. You mentioned sound. Yeah. And there's a theory that the, Ancients had a grip on technology that we don't give them enough credit for. Gorilla grip. And I do believe that the pyramids were created with 
sound. Okay. And how oh. I think this happened was I think that every human on earth got some kind of conch call or something like that. Every human on earth at the time, which this was probably like a hundred, 200,000 people or something, 12 million. Is that years ago, two, two, five million, something like that. Like I think million. they all pilgrimaged to that area. Okay. And they all wrapped around the area where the pyramids were and they started singing something. They started singing a song all together in unison. And they didn't know what they were singing right now, but what? But if we were to listen back to what they were singing, it, I think it would have been Suit and Tie by Justin Timberlake. Ooh, one of my favorites. Because there's something oh. to that song that is, when you hear that song, da, da, think, da, 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 Oh, Ooh. I'll be on my suit time. No, wait, start it out earlier than that, Nate. I, I know this song, but the way that I you guys are saying it, I can't wait to look at you don't. on the floor. Good looking. So I don't think they even knew. They didn't. English wasn't even around then. But I think there's a cosmic connection to that song. Because you hear that song, you're like, damn, this shit's good. This shit is like on right. another type of conscious be on type sound wave. Class. And I think they sang that whole song and it was like, like slowly the pyramids were stacking up and building. No, no, no. It's one of the most beautiful images They're I've just, ever heard. Uh, I just, Bunch of people sing around. Oh. Is that what you really think, Nate? Eric. Yes. Don't shame people for this. You opinions. think I'm crazy? <laughs> Eric. You must think I'm crazy, don't Eric. you? For thinking that I, type of listen, shit. I but don't you think you're crazy. It. I just only have time for serious discussions about this shit. Anything else is disrespectful to what these ancients built. Hold on, man. I saw that as extremely serious. I saw that as extremely serious. Uh, oh, hey, well, I do believe there's you. a time and for that. It's a leading theory. It's a leading theory. I love no, theories. you're right. I was being disrespectful, and I want to apologize no, no, to the I, I like to be realm playful. and the ancient, um, you know, sort of peoples out there. So then, I, but I, I love trying to talk about this because I end up sounding so foolish. But I was watching a video that was like, oh yeah, sure, they they could have made that, but could they have? Put the pyramids right on the latitudes and longitudes of so so and so, or could they have gotten this mathematical equation of the architecture of it correct? Or isn't it funny that if you add up all the sides, it equals the circumference of the Earth? All this shit that I'm like, I don't really know. You know, the scientists are talking about this, but I don't have these facts memorized. But I know something's up. Well, right? by the way. They're not using enough carbon dating, what, especially for the artifacts. Dude, because oh, what they're doing I is always they're, just, feel this. they're just they're looking at I'm the dates. I'm always saying you this. Always they're looking at the dates. They're looking at the dates on the site of one thing because people what they didn't realize is a lot of these artifacts are inherited. These pyramids are inherited by the culture of Egypt. They are not built by the Egyptians, even right. or whatever. And so the people who inherited it, in the way that we celebrate uh, the Easter Island heads, we kind of have a little ritual there. And how often do you? And you, you do know this? that's. Not just a head, too. There's a body underneath, brother. Of course I know that. Of course I know that. But what's the thing is, how often do you go down the sidewalk and you see somebody initialed in it, right, from 2004 or something? Because they redid the sidewalk. But really, that sidewalk was built hundreds of years ago or whatever, whenever they built it. And that's the same thing with the pyramids where you're finding an artifact, yeah, from the year 200. But these pyramids are dating back to millions of years ago and i right. think i know how this happened how? because you'll find that those pyramids aren't just in egypt and giza wherever they are in south america they're in mexico Mayan pyramids somebody There's listening many... to this right now and like what the fuck this is there are crazy. so yeah. many and that's okay i want to say too that's okay if you're 25 30 and you never heard this shit there's always a place that you learn about it and if you're right. not 30 you might want to earmuffs for this next part because it's going to scare the fuck out of you with how i believe the pyramids are made <laughs> And how we have the same type of pyramid that is true east, south, northwest throughout the globe. Do you guys familiar, are you familiar rather with the um, polar shift that oh, occurs? God. No. What is this? You mean Every... of the incoming global catastrophe that is inevitable and happened? Uh, you that noticed. might have happened, been the floods. Is this a, oh, is this a thing literature. where. Catastrophe oh. is a theme throughout all ancient art. You realize that the flood myth is not just Abrahamic. It reaches across mind civilizations. It reaches across all type of other Asian civilizations. Hey. It happened to Noah and all the others. Why is there always a flood? And why was it always an earth wiper? Because 
of the pole <laughs> shifts. Right, in the pole. And you know what? The CIA, we must have been watching the same video. The CIA <laughs> wrote a book on this that they tried to blacklist. Brainwash. And guess what? It just surfaced. And guess what? This type Surfing. of catastrophe might be happening sooner than we expect. We're overdue for a polar shift. And what happens to a civilization when they realize doom is imminent? Let's just say <laughs> people stop giving a fuck about little silly day-to-day -day responsibilities. Yeah. People start yeah. saying, what's the speed limit? Oh, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Oh, oh, oh I want to say this really quick. I, really, really quick, because I, I said in the other podcast I got pulled over for texting and driving. I feel terrible about it. I posted yeah. a video today that looked like a, but I recorded that before it happened. So I'm not texting and driving anymore. But I looked up the ramifications of the texting and driving charges. I got five points on my license. And guess what? What the fuck? If I, if I get one more infraction, if I get six points, I have to pay $300 for a what they call a license reassessment fee. And then on top of every ticket, on top of the base charge, I got another crazy ass charge stacked on top. So I better come correct on the streets because the police are trying to wipe They're my bank account you. out like the great bacon. flood. Wipe up my bank account. They really but are, anyways, man. But no, 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 no. Not back anyways. to the back to the floods. But I Eric, hope you're hold heating on, that real quick. What? Real quick on that, just Eric. I think you need to go extra hard with the texting and driving and get these extra mm, points. I'm because guess what? Guess what, dude? What? Those what? that extra money is going to our teachers. It's going to our firefighters. You like it's that? Going I'm to our sure. paramilit paramilitary citywide. Cop well, I was thinking day. if I get my license pulled, I'll finally have to walk like a real New Yorker and I'll finally lose that weight that everybody's kind of harping on me to, to get off my belly. <laughs> I hate cars. <laughs> God gave me but two wait, feet to walk on. Okay, Can we go please back. go back? I want to keep talking about all this. Uh, Reverse. Uh, <laughs> okay. And so what happens when the poles shift is this. All of a sudden, the earth is completely gravitationally shifted on its axis within a matter of about eight hours. And when that happens, all of a sudden you're finding hours. mammoths are ripped out of the earth. Everything is ripped out of the earth and placed somewhere else randomly. That's why you're finding all these ancient societal bones. What are you throughout talking the entire about? Globe. You don't know about the polar shifts? How do you think an that, ice age starts, man? How do you think a mini ice age starts, man? Mammals are are uprooted and they're they're di dislocated. What Jack is saying is that this is such a violent event, Nate, that basically you realize that we're moving. It feel everything feels stable and in stasis right now, right? Well, it feels people. like you're not moving at all. Well, guess what, dude? We are moving at thousands of miles an hour, going hella fast. Once this thing, once the poles shift, poles which is shift. inevitable, it's happened before. Guess what you start to feel is the speed of the earth. The car slams the on sound. the brake and you go <laughs> flying. You get Nate, what's going to happen to you is you the earth Brain's is going to suddenly come to a stop and all of a sudden you're going to be you're in Los Angeles right now. Well, in about 20 minutes you're going to be sitting uh at the fucking uh at the diner or down the street from me cuz that's how fast you're going to be flying across, across the, the globe. Oh shit. And you're going to be got a new new product. New product just dropped. The okay. earth seat belt. You put, you have a, a, I'm going to be strapped to the earth fucking uh, laying on my back and got a seatbelt <laughs> straight up attached to the fucking core, the mantle oh, or whatever. Oh, and I'm going to be strapped up in that fucker oh. and just everybody could come feed me with a spoon. I'm staying in. Bye. You guys can go fucking fly wherever you want. I'm strapped into the earth, bitch. Wow. So you're saying that the earth is a car. Wow. Uh, that, the earth is a car <laughs> the way you're describing it it, seems, it kind yeah. of yeah wow feels so like when it. You put, uh, that makes opens up a whole new window for stuff earth window is there like a phone jack we could put in the ground somewhere you can <laughs> somebody on earth can control the music for the whole globe and put in Whoa. one fucking sound that'd be fun the, uh, that would be amazing the aux cord the earth aux cord yeah you got to go down to argentina and drop a fucking uh ipod in the in the well and then you get the you get to play the tracks. For Did a day you hear or about so. this? This is a little bit of a tangent, but I, this is another fucking TikTok. We're just all just watching TikToks and regurgitating what we find on there. <laughs> right, right, right. But um, there, who's that racist guy who like Kanye West is like in coots with the younger Donald fella? Trump? No, no, oh, no. Nate, oh, um, oh, what's his name? Nate, whatever. Bigman. You know, what I'm Nate talking. Bigman. That's how uh, unracist we are. We don't know the fuck this. We guy don't is. even know. We don't even uh, pay attention. But, Jane, uh, um, but anyway, no, but it's said, that loser. What, I know, I know, I know. And they, um. Well, if you think of it, Austin. Just, yeah, something. Okay, like what that. about him? But 
but he was on a podcast. Nick Fuentes. Said, Nick Fuentes, right. yes. And uh, he was on a podcast, and he said he he was re- recounting uh, Kanye West's inter- uh, interaction with Trump when he asked him to be his like running mate this past you know couple months or whatever. You remember this when he like showed up at Marlboro? Sure, Lager. sure. And he said during the interaction, Trump was like gave him an iPad and said, "Hey, put on one of your songs uh, for the whole Mar or controls all the music in Mar-a-Lago." And he was like, <laughs> and he was like, he thought he was gonna put on stronger or like some kind of you know banger hit. And he said that he put on "Say You Will" off of 808s and Heartbreaks. And um, I do you know that song? How does it go? I say goes, you will. It's like. Why would she? It's like a really like sad song <laughs> that is like really emo, and yeah. I just just imagine Trump sitting there like listening to "Say You Will" by Kanye West and all of Mar-a-Lago listening to it at one point, and then he's like, uh, "It just." I know so, that um, album kind of changed the game for a lot of music in the following years. Kind of made that type of music kind of cool. But when that album came out and I torrented it, I was so disappointed because I wanted another homecoming, whatever. And it was so different. I'm sorry, man. You can't, Eric, why won't you let artists evolve and change? I have a hard time accepting, well, uh, I guess I have a hard time accepting change in general. Yeah. You're the type of guy who's glad that Andre 3000 quit. You're like, good. No. Stay out of the business. wrong about that. Oh, no, you're always talking shit about it. Eric Badu, my favorite. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> they have a child together. Seven. I just got a fun idea. I just got a fun idea. <laughs> Wait, I want to bring up after. I want to bring right, up the ahead. Easter Island thing. Well, okay. Just, Wait. Okay. I, All right. Go ahead. All right, all right. Go ahead. The heads on Easter Island, right? They. I don't know if this Squidward. is confirmed. I think they. I think there's bodies underneath. Giant bodies. Not human and by bodies, the way, this, but their own. The head. The bodies of the head. Not bodies of the head. People. And and it's, if it's proportional, they're huge. And I, the thing I was watching also suggested that that could have been the flood, whatever, burying them. But I'm also thinking, you know where Easter Island is, right? Off the coast of Chile. It's in the smack dab middle, though, the ocean. It's so far from all the other continents. Mm. Yeah. And so what we've been told in history classes, and by the way, I'm not saying anything's true. I'm just questioning what we've been told, which is what every good human being should do, right? See, so, yeah. I'm saying we... They took canoes out there? Really? You think you that know, they just took I little canoes out there? Well, I'm not, I'm not, maybe they had cool ships that they built back then, but you, you're not telling me there was one massive continent where everybody was having civilizations together. Pangea. And, that, and then they broke up. You know what I mean? Well, that's Pangea. Because, but then that would suggest that civilizations were happening on... Uh, they were. Pangea before the Sumerian, before Babylon. Oh, they were, man. Did you not listen to what we were all just saying about five minutes ago, dude? There, think about this. How in the last hundred years we went from horse, horse and buggy, to the Tesla, in one hundred years, and within as many civilization wipeout events, catastrophic events, as have happened in the last whatever, however long, two hundred fifteen thousand mm-hmm. at least years of humanity. Mm-hmm. How many room for hundreds of years of technology has there been? Were you Whoa. guys just saying this word for word? Because I, I think I was checking out the dryer, found the lock in the dryer. No, I think me and Nate were just listing movies when you were gone. Oh, I like that. But I agree with the fact. I think there's been <laughs> technology wipeouts. Of course there has. Wipe of course. Outs. Return to sediment. I just want everybody to know, to feel comfortable in the fact of not knowing. You know what I'm saying? And open Embrace yourself up to be surprised blitz. because many beliefs that we hold are just patently incorrect. And Patent don't discount the conspiracy theorists and the science fiction writers because they're often closer to, to the truth than you might want to believe. Orson Welles, be careful. Watch out. You don't know when James and the Giant Peach is going to see a giant peach in real oh, life. That movie gave me ni- what I called nightmares for really? a long time after I watched it. He okay, wait. Will you, will you talk about James and the Giant on the Peach? Beach? Okay, talk about it, and I have a secret idea. So go ahead. 
Okay, James and the Giant Peach is a kind of a creepily animated Disney so film marketed to I, children, but should have I'm been meant for adults. On Zoom, and so within they don't the know, film, James they don't know that I'm talking over Eric is right basically now. on the beach with his parents. And I'm going to tell the listeners a little secret, even cloud. though it's probably hard to hear me because and we're talking at the same then, time. But here's the secret. Um, James, uh, I guess, finds is, a home in a Giant Peach. I uh, love you But then guys. that cloud's still out. I, I don't remember, but I remember thinking this movie's right. not for me. Now I'm going to go off mute. This feels like a make-a-wish that like Eric oh, that like, was interesting, a guest man. on the podcast. And, like... <laughs> that was mad interesting. <laughs> what did you just do, Jay? Let's just say I muted and I talked over you that whole time so that the, oh, listeners, the listeners know what I just said, but you guys don't oh, know. That dude. Was, that's oh, a slap in the my. face, man. That's a betrayal. No, it's me. Oh, really? I was just being silly. We can. So I thought I really wanted to talk about James and the Giant. Giant. Nate, you said it sounded like I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you could just kind of just listen to, I, I had the privilege of just listening privilege. to what Eric said, and I couldn't hear what Jack said because he was muted. And Eric, while well, he, he was just recounting like the basic like Wikipedia plot of James and the Giant Peach. <laughs> 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 from my like 1999 viewing of it 1999 fresh oh, should we say what gave us joy oh eric's leaving again um nate I you want to talk about daylight savings real quick daylight savings absolutely i would love to daylight savings doesn't mean anything anymore because our phones Come are on, automatically man. change and um, the time I remember a time when you had to physically set back a clock that was analog and you had to, it was a whole thing that you remember to turn your time back or put it forward. But now everything's digital. And I don't Who made like all that. these decisions, man? If I had been around for know. some of the year one human decisions, first of all, I've said this before. I don't know if I said on the pod, but I want there to be infinite. Basically months shouldn't ever repeat. We should keep celebrating naming months more than... They stopped at 12, really? These lazy motherfuckers stopped at 12? When Meanwhile, right. I'm sitting here and I can think of about as many month names as you could ever fucking think about. Akoja, El, oh, Elris, shit. Elris, Velris, By, Koja. Bajan. 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 I could literally go forever, and that's just me. So. And we're getting new astrology signs on top of that, you know? We're bored with this shit. By the way, my dad is getting into astrology at 71 years old. Congrats. He hey, we got the his, same age of dad. Yeah, he's he just got his birth chart read and he's a uh a Virgo rising and he's really he said he's open to the possibilities of what astrology can tell you about yourself. Hmm. And he's fully open to all that stuff at this point. And Damn. uh you know, congrats to Mr. Mr. Verone on Would he do uh, a reading for us far. on the podcast? Would he do a reading? I'll give him a letter. I'll buy him some pad tie or something he would he would more than i think he would absolutely love that and all and right we could plug his instagram wow. and blow his shit up should i produce an album for him i think i've asked you yeah. this before of course well you should co you should co uh get on the track with them father son. like diddy diddy style diddy and daddy because my dad is a musician and he's never put That's out right like a, a solo kind of project before and i was like you know what i feel like he needs to like put to he needs to put out the the uh the mr verone fucking the jams you know what i'm saying and it, i could be on, and i could be in the background of the videos and kind of be like yeah. ah, ha, ha, you know like diddy style dj like, Khaled could you style. imagine someone doing like a a voiceover like a you know spoken word over his music Who's music? I, oh, I absolutely could, but yeah. my dad's kind of style is like, um, I don't even know how to describe it. Like it kind of sounds like a eighties Michael Jackson songs. Like that. I feel like it's going to sound like that. Like, like beat it, Damn. you know, That's like, he, he, I, I, yeah, he I want to hang out with shit. your dad. I've met your dad I, and I've met I your dad, him. Jack. And yet you guys. Wait, have you have met, met my, my dad. dad. I've met Eric's dad. I've met both. Oh yeah, dads. you've met my dad. I've met everybody's dads here. They're all awesome, by the way. Amazing. My and dad's sixty-two. Are, you know, we all have very interesting eccentric fathers. But you know what we need to do as a collective? 
but we need to break these family curses and yes. change that and shatter them. Fucking, we are done with right. this connective tissue that is drawing us to the past, and we Dude. are breaking them now. No it's more mind suffering. over matter. No it's more. Of this Nate, you're not really screaming. Nate, matter. you're not. That's not really screaming, man. Let it out. Yeah, I, can I know. You're whenever you're back, home, man. you never. When you're out in New York, you scream like crazy. But when you're in the in the house, you never <laughs> ever scream. Why is that? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I have my. I'm. A, I'm. I'm part Italian. Okay, and okay. I have to <laughs> hold back my my natural speaking level. And I'm kind of a little bit deaf as well. So this is like double bad. I feel like sometimes what I want to be doing is shouting all day long and yelling at people and i feel like i can't even get out what i want to say without raising it to a crazy decibel point you know what i'm saying i love decibels so but i've been trained by so many people to say nate you're being too fucking loud so i have this interesting so i i constantly am like so aware of it now that i have to keep my voice that's a shame man and they want to keep me small and they want to keep me tucked away in the cage but i'm telling you right now the cage is about to be unlocked and i am about to come in Yes, and I'm about to hit into a new stride where I'm being loud and I'm being unapologetic, apologetically I'm myself and my most. Well, I don't self. like that so much, and I don't, yeah. and I don't care anymore. Starting now, dude, I'd be in my girl's ear like, oh, <laughs> loud as hell. <laughs> and Jack, that's bringing you ear. joy. <laughs> What's bringing me joy is that I'd be in my girl's ear uh, like this. Is that is that I'd be in my girl's ear. <laughs> yeah i'm in right now i'm in all of y'all's ears uh, yeah you're right. i'll be in my girl's ear like hey baby you want to get some dinner tonight even no matter that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted the silence there for about 30 seconds. I wanted that <laughs> silence to last for three whole minutes. And then let's just pick back up like nothing happened. We'll put it all in. Right, post. So. <laughs> all right. Well, um, yeah, let's do right, we'll it. Yeah. What brought me joy really? Oh, quick. Eric, <laughs> what brought you joy? For real. Um, oh, oh, I beat a video game that I really enjoyed. Oh, you really? Heart, Called Heart. The Forgotten City, and this dealt with time travel in Rome, so you know I was all interested in it. Wow. There's a oh, and I want to say I had a fact earlier that I wanted to drop. This Saying this fact will give me joy. Did you realize, because we see the Romans as ancient, right? So old mm. idiots for making those dumb choices, not right. making electricity. Trojan. They're about 2,000 years ago, Jesus' time. Guess what was 2,000 years ago to the Romans? 4,000. Well, the Egyptians. Is that right? Oh, my God. So what are you saying? What is, what I'm just that saying that is time is long, and we have been around for a minute. That's all I'll say. I won't give any answers. I'll just give you the facts, and you draw the conclusions. <laughs> it's like having a stroke at the very end of the all right. podcast. All right, yeah, y'all. All right. Thanks for listening. We love you all. Peace. Wait, we have to say our joy. Oh, I just gave my joy. Oh, yeah, sorry. What? I, I didn't thought... even give. I didn't even get to give my joy. <laughs> oh, 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 hey, what's your joy? Eric, how could you, man? So I wait, hold up. The joy. Just... No, I didn't, man. What joy You're did you get? End the fucking. Uh, good God, Nate. Unreal, dude. Let. Uh, can I just say? I don't want that to never happen again. <laughs> and there's going to be grave consequences can, can, for you. Can I say really quick? I'm watching the Spotify um, metrics that show when people stop listening. And I think people stop listening right when we say what, what we're What is up with that? So we can, I mean. I don't think people give a fuck what we're joyful. Nope. All right. It's cut. We'll never do it again. But <laughs> Nate, do you want to Nate, 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 do you want to do the last ever the last, what gave no, you joy? No, this can't be the last one. No, this is the like, name of the podcast. We have to have one thing. No, we can't. We have to. We need to. But, but you have to be willing to separate you, um, yourself from things. All right, go right. ahead. Okay. Well, okay. Anyways, I'll just say mine. Mine was, um, you know what gave me joy was this, uh, a couple of friends of ours made a YouTube special, uh, Rajat and Jeremy. They made a oh. Hollywood recorder. Just look up the Hollywood recorder if you want to watch this. And they did a round table with these actors and it was an hour long produced by Harris Meyerson and uh, directed by Johnny uh, Froman. 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 It was just so hilarious. And I was like, 
I was just cracking up the entire time. And I was like, I don't know. It just, it was inspiring. And I was like, I think more people need to hey, know man. it exists. So it if, you haven't, if you haven't watched it, give them the flowers, <laughs> give them their flowers. Rajan watch it, Jeremy, man, they were making me Harris, laugh. Like Johnny, shit was amazing. Meryl, respect. The whole crew. Shout out. All right. Lo- love you all. Peace. Well, that concludes another incredible fucking episode of Joy Tactics. Head over to patreon.com slash joy tactics to unlock exclusive weekly bonus episodes. And make sure to follow us on social media where we post fire TikToks and hilarious shit like that. And if you loved the shit you just listened to make sure to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening and remember, we are shaped by our thoughts, we become what we think. When the mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves.